Hey guys, it's Mark with Hallmark Pool Supplies. And in this video, we're gonna talk about basic pool operation and how a swimming pool works. We're gonna talk about all the key components on the average swimming pool, what they are, what they're used for, how to use them. And if you're a new pool owner and you wanna learn a little more about your pool and you wanna learn how to run your pool a little bit more effectively, then stay tuned, you're not gonna to wanna to miss this video. Okay, so I have a diagram here that's gonna help illustrate how a swimming pool works. And all swimming pools will have suction lines as well as pressure lines. So let's start with suction lines first, and let's start with a skimmer. What is a skimmer? A skimmer is on the side of the pool. It is designed to skim and pick up all the surface debris as it falls into the pool, such as leaves. And so this way, we can come out, we can check our baskets in the skimmer, we can open it, we can clean the baskets periodically because on a suction line, we have two in this case and it's highlighted by these pink lines and this is skimmer one and this is skimmer two. And they are both regulated by having each line being able to be opened or closed. So under normal filtration, we would have both skimmers opened, but this way, as the water is traveling from the surface of the pool and, and all the debris is caught in the basket, it is then bringing all that water back through the pump, through the system, and we have to make sure that we empty those baskets periodically because we don't want them to get clogged. So if we look at the skimmer, we can also use the skimmer as a reference point in regards to how full we want to keep the pool because we want to maintain the pool at the proper water level. So when we look at a skimmer, we typically want to come down about an inch, inch and a half from the top underside of the skimmer and that would be the proper fill level. Keep in mind, we don't want to have the water level too low because then we starve the pump and the pump can't get water. And we don't want to have the skimmer uh, or the water level in the skimmer too high because then the skimmer doesn't function properly. So it is very important to make sure that we maintain the water level in the swimming pool at the desired level so that everything is working properly. We can also use skimmers to vacuum a pool because keep in mind, these are suction lines and we're gonna talk about that in a minute, but let's go back to the drain. A drain line is also a suction line and a drain is pulling water from the bottom of the pool where the skimmer is pulling water from the top of the pool, but it is also under suction and it's also being pulled in by means of the pump then going through the system. When we look at older pools that have drains, they might only have one drain. Like I said before, some pools don't have a drain at all, but pools today that are built, they will have dual drains. They're gonna be two and by code, these drains will be at least three feet apart and they're designed so that there is no entrapment. Long time ago, if we only had one drain and a swimmer got down on that drain and the suction was really tight and all the other lines were closed, they would be entrapped and they would be stuck on the drain. So by doing it this way, if we do plug off or close one drain, the other drain is still open, therefore the suction's not as great and we don't have to worry about entrapment. So all pools today that have drains will have dual drains. Much older pools only had one. Both skimmer and drain are suction lines. One is pulling water from the top of the pool and the other is pulling water from the bottom of the pool. And of course, each line is regulated with a valve so that we can control the suction when we're operating the pool. For an example, a skimmer can also be used as a vacuuming source. So a lot of people that vacuum their pool manually, they're gonna vacuum out of the skimmer. Now, earlier I had told you this is gonna be skimmer one and this is gonna be skimmer two. So let's just say that we're gonna be vacuuming out of skimmer one. If we're gonna vacuum out of skimmer one, we would then close skimmer two and we would close the drain, giving us all the suction on one skimmer. If the suction is too great, then we can open the other skimmer a little bit or we can open the drain a little bit and that relieves the suction. But this way we can regulate and control so that when we are vacuuming, we're gonna get the most amount of suction so that we're gonna be very efficient when it comes to vacuuming the pool. If I was to hook up a vacuum in skimmer two and I left all the lines open, we would have suction but not very much. So 
that's going basically into how to vacuum a swimming pool. So if you guys need a, a tutorial with a little more information on how to vacuum your swimming pool, I have made videos and I will post a link down below in regards to that. So some of you guys might be wondering what this little flap or this door is on the skimmer. This is actually called a weir door. Weir doors are designed so that as the water and the debris is coming in, it goes over the weir door and then eventually goes down into the basket where the trash is collected. And then of course, if we turn the pump off, the weir door will go up. And the reasoning for this is so that when the pump is off, any trash that has been accumulated inside the basket doesn't float back into the pool. So if any of you homeowners have a pool and you don't have this on your skimmer, then it's missing or it's broke and you need to get one because the skimmer doesn't function properly without the weird door. So it's very important to have that and every skimmer has one. Okay, so let's take a look at the filter system. With the filter system, we have a pump and the pump is pulling water from the skimmers. It's pulling water from the drains. The skimmers are at the top of the pool, the drains are at the bottom, and those are suction lines like we said before. And as the water is being sucked in, it's then going into the filter system where it is filtered before it's returned back to the pool. Now, there are three different types of filter systems. There's sand, there's DE, there's cartridge. And for the simplicity of this video, we're just gonna say that this is where the water is filtered and the clean water is being returned back to the pool. Now, for you guys that want a little more detailed information in regards to how to operate or maintain the filter system that you have on your pool. I have made videos on all three systems and I will post links to all three of those down below in the description so that way you guys can check it out and then you can watch the video that pertains to the system you have on your pool. Once the water is filtered, then it goes through what's called the return line. What is the return line? The return line is marked in yellow and as you can see, I've got two of them coming back into the pool and the return turn line is a pressure line. So that's where you see the jets on the side of the pool returning the clean water back to the pool. They are called returns because it's exactly what it what it's doing. It's returning the water back to the pool, uh, but it's also called jets. And some pools also have jets in the steps. Not all pools do, but if you see this, jets in the steps were put in and they were designed to basically keep the steps debris free. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about operation and circulation. During the swimming season, it is required to run your swimming pool at least eight to 12 hours, and for best results, run it 24 hours. The more a pool is running, the more effective it is, the cleaner it stays, the cleaner a pool stays, the less chemicals, all the way around it's better. But in either case, what's very important is circulation, so let's talk about circulation. When we look at this diagram, this is a rectangular pool, and if you'll note, I've got two returns and I've got two skimmers, and this is very important where this is placed on a pool for proper circulation uh, and efficiency. And so as the water is going back through the returns to the pool, as you can see here, we've got water going here and water coming here, and it's creating a circular motion, and that's why they call it circulation. We want that water to circulate. At the same time, if you take note, this return is pushing the water to this skimmer, and this return is pushing the water to this skimmer, making the skimmers more effective. So once again, a cleaner pool, less chemicals, easier to maintain. So circulation and the way a pool is plumbed is key. In the field, I have seen over the years, a lot of pools where everything is plumbed on one side, for an example, they put a skimmer in the middle and two returns on the end, and all the water is going in one direction. There's no flow, there's no circulation, and we want to have that flow and circulation. And another thing that's key is our turnover rate. When we have even flowing water in a pool, we have a better turnover rate. What is a turnover rate? Is the amount of time it takes for all the water in the swimming pool to go through the system back to the pool. So here again, even flow, good circulation, good turnover rate, we can actually see how this runs. When I see pools that are plumbed, where everything's on one side, the reason this is done is builders, they wanna run everything so that there's less ditch digging and less plumbing and everything goes straight to the system. 
As you see in this diagram, I've got a skimmer and I've even got a return going to the far side of the pool, but it is placed properly, so therefore we have good circulation. So if you guys have a pool that's not plumbed properly or you have poor circulation, then we do have return jets that you see here in the pool. And these return jets that you have, they are directional. So we can actually rotate to direct or change the position. And that way we can move the water in the desired direction that we want. And so by doing so, we can get it to circulate the best. If we have a pool that's not plumbed properly, as long as it's clear, we can maintain, not a problem, but if a pool gets dirty or green, it's gonna take a little longer to clear. For an example, if this pool gets dirty or green, it's gonna clear much faster because we've got a good turnover rate, we've got good flow, and when we adjust our returns, a lot of people will tell you to turn the returns downward. In my opinion, and I've been doing this for a long time, we've been in the pool business for almost 57 years, and we've built a lot of pools. Having the returns set where they are down a little, but point them slightly upward. This way we are creating a little bit of a ripple or a little bit of wake at the top of the pool. That allows all the surface debris to go right to the skimmer. And especially if it's plumbed properly, we're pushing it right to the skimmer and it's picking up the debris, making everything much more efficient. So these are adjustable. We don't wanna have the returns up too high and we don't want them too low. You gotta find that medium where it just satisfies both. And then we've got a good turnover rate and an even flow as this pool is circulating and therefore uh, it makes for a better operation of the pool. So if you guys have any difficult pool related questions or issues and you need help, the fastest way to get a hold of me is through my Patreon page where I actually do phone sessions and I even do virtual service calls and I'll be glad to help. I did want to mention when I made this video that there are a lot of different options, features, and equipment that can be put on a pool. There's also different shapes and sizes, but I based this video on the average backyard pool. So hopefully this was helpful. And if it was, hit that like and subscribe button for future content. I do want to thank everybody for watching. Remember us at Hallmark Pool Supplies for all your pool needs. My name is Mark, and I'll see you on the next video.